Hey guys, so I'm making another video, and yes, this is yet another video about religion. I'm sorry, it's been a lot on my mind lately, so it is what it is. Um, so, as you know, there is this person that I really admired, and um, she has changed religion several times and uh, she considered going Jewish then uh, decided against it and converted to Catholicism and uh, now today she expressed the reasons why she chose and they're quite flimsy but again it's her life it's her choice what I want to discuss and this wasn't supposed to be what I was going to say in this video because I was going to make a rant about uh, Christian pre preachers in Jerusalem insulting Jews, but that's not the subject of this video because this came up. So I consider her really smart, but I think at the moment she's kind of lying to herself and letting herself go. And don't get me wrong, I still admire her really much. She is a young mother. She is smart. She she is uh, honest about wanting to seek God, but she's doing it the wrong way. I mean, when um, my first reaction to seeing that I had Jewish inclinations... And again, this is nothing new, but um, the, and the vast majority of um, it came with all strength uh, this year. So I've been doing all I can to question my motives, to question my beliefs, and challenge my beliefs to make sure that it is is this really what I want? Is this really real? Am I really interpreting things properly? And I'm challenging. I actually read more and listen more to things that go against my beliefs than I listen to things that uh, corroborate to what I believe. And uh, this person... Uh, First, she converted just after a few weeks of uh, um, deciding to become Catholic in a very deep emotional state, which is not the greatest state to decide, hey, let's uh, convert to Christianity and baptize my son. And, uh, you know, it's a lot of things to go through. It's... Uh, it's not easy, but the thing is, unlike me, the person is, uh, while I'm seeking things that could um, kind of, and hang on, I'm preparing some cocoa, um, actually, this is uh, the brand that I'm using, it's organic, um, so yeah. <laughs> And um, so she decided to convert uh, out of the blue. That's the first thing. And uh, her position, basically what she does is she is seeking apologetics. And she is seeking anything that kind of confirms her bias. and. She's not looking into challenger views. I think that's why she probably has been jumping from religion to religion. She doesn't question her beliefs until something comes along and she changes her thought process. It's, uh, it's not a linear thing. She actually looks for things that confirms that she's right. Instead of trying to look for challenging views so that was kind of a little disappointing to me and uh disturbing uh, because 
I think that when you are in the process of doing a life-changing decision, I mean, I know what it is being raised Catholic, and it's not easy, really not easy. And she she's doing the, this out of a deep emotional state. She's not doing this out of, I don't know, it's... um. She may think it's devotion. She may think it's a miracle. She may think it's it's a real a little. For instance, my decision to convert to Judaism. Yes, it was abrupt. I have to say it, but it's something that was building up all over my life. I didn't become a Wiccan. I didn't become a Protestant. I didn't become a a Buddhist or Hinduist or whatever in the process. Yes, I did study multiple religions, but I was always like, no, this is not the right religion. And this is not right. There was a brief moment that I, because of something I was going in my life, I kind of went a little back to Catholicism, even though it was really around the time my parents divorced. Um, but I never really accepted the New Testament. It was just holding on to a, a figurine that I found it was raining really hard. And that uh, figurine, that little saint, she was a virgin, whatever. Um, and it's, it's not like I believed in. I just held on to the image because... Um, I found it and I liked it and um, I never worshipped it. I've never prayed to it. That's the thing. So um, I had to, I found that image and it was raining really hard. There was a lot of water everywhere and that thing was right. But yeah, I was just, it's just superstition. I didn't uh, really think much of it. Uh, doesn't get me to go to church, it didn't get me to pray, I just like to have the image. And my mom kind of tried to use it to get me more saints. But it was very temporary. It was just, you know, some sort of amulet or whatever. Um, but it's the thing, I never accepted the New Testament. It was always something I rejected, especially the Pauline letters which I have always hated. And now, since I talked to Jehovah's Witnesses for about two years, it's even worse to me. It's really even worse to deal with the Pauline letters. So I can't really accept them in any way. And it's the first thing that Christians use in their apologetics. It's really the Pauline letters. Because that that's all there is, is Paul is the entire thing that creates Christianity. Without Paul of Tarsus, there wasn't there wouldn't be, you know, the, the Christianity would have wouldn't have taken the, the impulse it has taken and wouldn't have become what it is now. So in that sense that's uh, what it is. And the thing that disturbed me the most is that um she started saying that um, there's a lot of misconceptions about Christianity and the bad things people say about Christianity are not true. What things about Christianity are not true? The fact that they persecuted Jews throughout history, the fact that they massacrated everyone that didn't believe in Catholicism, their witch hunts, their inquisition. I mean, how can you defend Catholics? How can you defend their lies? How can you defend that they create false idols, that they, they to extort money from their followers, every whatever years they will, you know, sanctify dead people so that they can put out more figurines and saints and fake um, Mary apparitions so that they can 
leech on people's money. That's what they do. It's basically what they do. So, um, I don't know. These apologetics. Eh? And the thing is, it's not just apologetics for the religions. It's apologetics for what they did in the Middle Ages, defending the Crusades. And yes, there are there is part of the Crusades that kind of was, uh, you know, important. And uh, I can't deny that if there wasn't uh, the Templars and uh, the the Muslims would be far. Uh, I'd be probably wearing a burqa right now or something like that. The thing is, and we must be well aware of this, is that Christianity has been nefarious in a lot of environments. They have persecuted Jews unfairly all throughout history. They originated Nazis and they originated all the ideologies and the anti-Semitism that is latent in Europe and even reform Judaism and all these movements that are destroying Judaism from the inside. It created the self-hating Jew. It created all these things that are basically destroying Judaism. And it's, um, it's hard to think about it. It's hard to think that um, someone who you admire and you thought was smart is uh, basically someone who uses apologetics is someone who wants she she claims that she's looking for the truth but in fact if you're looking for apologetics you're just looking for lies you're just saying i don't want i don't want to think let other people think for me and let the lies uh, come and affect me and that that's basically what you want so um Hang on. Um, and so that's it. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not having dinner today, so I'm just drinking a cup of cocoa. So, uh, yeah, that's it. They, they really uh, lie to themselves and they want to believe in the lies and they want to accept all the bad things that their religion did because it's the only thing that they can keep them in their faith. And um, I don't know, it's, um, it's stupid, it's stupid. And uh, for instance, in regards to Judaism, I've been reading... A, um, opposing views. I've been exposing myself to videos that debunk Judaism and so far I haven't been anyone, I haven't seen anyone successfully debunking Judaism because so far there is no argument that they use that debunks Judaism at the, and that proves that Judaism is wrong. But I am still searching and still looking for it because I think um, if you're reading apologetics, what you're doing is you want to have blind faith. And uh, it's not a strong faith because you're building it on lies. You're building it on a house of cards. You're building your foundations on lies. It's like you're building a house of cards. But if, like me, you're building the foundations and creating little earthquakes or big earthquakes, trying to see if the foundations are falling, you basically are making sure that your house is built with strong foundations. And you have to see if your house, instead of building a house, Without testing it, um, you're testing the foundations every step, and you're seeing if the it's well built and if it's a house that is safe. And 
and if it's a good house to be in from the beginning. And what they're doing, all those that seek apologetics, is basically they're basically building a house of cards. So they build the house, they get high and high and high, but the house has no structure. It has been built on the same materials. It doesn't have foundations. It was just built over the sand and just a little wind and the, the cards fly. There, there is no solid base for that belief. It's blind faith. It's not knowledge, it's blind faith. And as much as the person says that she looks for the truth, she's basically lying to herself. I, you know, I seek a secular point of view. I look at a Christian point of view. I look at the Jewish point of view and I compare them. And I expose myself to contradicting views because I think it is important when you are doing it, um, you're taking a path such as mine. I think it's very important to challenge your views, especially, you know, when you're Jewish, when you convert to Judaism, it's not something you can get out of. It's, um, when you go into that mikvah, you become Jewish forever. You may be coming atheist again, but you're still Jewish. You still have a Jewish soul. And whatever you do doesn't reflect only on yourself. It reflects on the Jewish people. And whatever you do is going to have an effect. It's, it's going to have an effect on Jewish people. You're going to affect the Jewish people. You're going to affect... Your descendants, especially if you're a woman. Let's say I convert to Judaism. And um, I marry a Jewish man. I have Jewish children. But I become an atheist. And I decide to raise my children atheists. Those children... Because they are the sons and daughters of a Jewish mom, they are Jewish. And um, so if I decided to raise my children atheists, I would be committing one of the worst sins. I would be keeping Jews away from the Torah. And I would be affecting my children's soul. I would be affecting... It's really hard to explain. So it's not something that you do out of the blue, you know. So I can never um, um, and as a Jewish woman, even in, for instance, I concede to raise my children Jewish, even though I may choose to be an atheist. My actions as the mother affect my children. The mothers and the virtue of the mother affects her children. So, what the kind of the Jewish woman is uh, what she does reflects on her house, reflects on her nation. So it is important when you convert to be sure that he, it is what you want and that you really are Jewish and that you're going to stay Jewish. And I don't take this lightly. That's why every single day I expose myself to Christian rhetoric. I expose myself to secular atheist rhetoric. 
And I compare it to what I believe. I compare it to the Torah. I compare it to my old views pre-Judaism. And I don't read apologetics. It's the most stupid thing you could do. And I think that's why my faith is so strong and my connection is getting stronger and stronger because I don't have confirmation bias. I, I'm i doing everything to challenge what I believe in and trying to see how serious I am about it. And I think that's how it's it's becoming strong because I'm not building it on a, on a, on a house of cards. I know the good, the bad, and I know every, you know, I am always challenging it, and it's important, because at the end of the day, if I convert and later choose that this is not for me, it's not going to just affect me, it's going to affect the entire Jewish people, it's going to affect potential children that I may have. So it is important when you make such a decision to be sure of what you're doing. And so far, I am certain. And um, the thing with using apologetics and only reading Christian things or... or Jewish things is that you will be building shaky foundations because you won't have contact with other ideologies. You won't be exposed to contrary ideas. And so what this will do is that the first time you're exposed to contrary to opposite ideas your faith will shatter because you built it on lies and you built it on propaganda so it is important when you make decisions that will affect your life. Moreover, if you have children that will affect your children's life, it is important to say, is this the truth? Is this the right path? Because um, when you're reading apologetics to keep your faith strong, it just means that you know it is not right, the right faith. Because if it is the right faith, you don't need apologetics to stay on that path. And no matter how much contradictor of uh, of how much people contradict your faith, you will stay strong because you know it's the truth, and nothing, no challenges are up to the things that you know, and. That's how true faith is. True faith is not blind faith. True faith is a faith that is built upon knowledge and truth. And I know I'm running in circles and it's really hard, but uh, that's what I wanted to say. And I'm glad. I'm glad. I was uh, really worried about myself. Because uh, when you see someone you admire going this path, um, you really start thinking, what if I become like this? I mean, she, she's been on that path longer than I am, than I have, and um, what if this happens to me? But now I know that she built her faith on shaky grounds and not for the right reasons. And uh, now I know that I'm... I'm okay. I'm okay because I know that what I'm doing is the exact opposite uh, of what she did and what she's doing now. 
because I build my faith and my knowledge by challenging it every time. And uh, so far it has been confirmed and uh, the challenges that I keep on putting on my faith have been strength strengthening strengthening it so that's it uh, i think it's really important and and uh, so goodbye that's it for today i'll see you in the next video thank you very much for putting up with my ramblings and bye bye